David McKinley running for the House of Representatives. Every time we get together, every year, every time, I'm, I'm very impressed with that. Um, let's see what all we're going to try to cover here. I wasn't expecting to follow the uh, the uh, John Racy Act. That he certainly got the crowd all warmed up, didn't he? Uh, I'm a uh, I'm a structural engineer. Don't do comedy. <laughs> uh, I'm one of uh, uh, five boys in a family that, uh, in Wheeling, that we're the seventh generation in Wheeling, and my grandson now is a ninth generation in West Virginia. Our first was beheaded by the Indians in 1782. <laughs> There's a pretty gruesome article in the, in the magazine or a book about it, and oh, he says, but we're, we're just not going to be pushed back. This is our state. This is for you all too. This is your state and, and what it means to you. And um, so I, I just wanted to, to, to chat a little bit with you. I brought, actually it was kind of interesting. I, um, we spoke together the first time. It was back on December of last year. And yes, here is the book. <laughs> it is incredible. Yeah. And I really think it's something that it should be a required reading for everyone in America. Uh, if you've not had any of you uh, have, have this for, show of hands, those of have you read the Five Thousand Year Leap? Okay, so well over half of you have done that. Um, it really, when, when you look at what Fred Daly has done, the time he spent in putting this together and working with you all, that's the kind of commitment that we're looking for all across this country, for people to get back to the basics. I got out of politics now about 16 years ago, 14, 16 years ago, because I believed in term limits. I didn't think that there ought to be times you ought to stop. Um, but Mary and I became concerned, much like many people across America in the Tea Party movement, and just conservatives in general. What's happened to our country? Where have we lost it? There was a poll taken recently and it really kind of mirrored a little bit about what we were thinking about. Today's generation of kids, it's the first generation in the history of America that our children don't have the confidence that their life is going to be better than ours. You and I grew up with our parents making sure that things were better for us, that, that we were trying to, to make our whole society and across this country better. And I think our parents and our grandparents did a pretty good job of that. But our kids don't think it's there for them. And that concerns me. And if you listen to a little bit of what John was talking about, how are we going to inspire this next generation? How are we going to get our country back again? Because it didn't just happen overnight, but just a gradual erosion of the things we hold dear. Things like when I came at that following the Constitution, okay, you have to, if you pay attention to this, you'll realize what's happening to our country. People need to think about it. So Mary and I, Mary and I looked real hard at what we were going to do. Do we get back into this game or not? Because to me, it's not something we take lightly. I'm out of my comfort zone. I have a nice engineering and architectural practice. Don and I have talked about that over the years on numbers of times. <coughs> we have, we've, we started from scratch. That great story that a lot of people have talked about across America where they've taken a company and, and had an idea and made it something happen. And 30 years ago, we started from scratch. I left. I had spent 15 years in the construction industry and decided, let's start a firm. Let's see what was in it. Don, you know, you've, you know, with your farm, you know what you can, you have to do those kinds of things. You just find out what's inside you. We started from scratch. 
We build a firm now to 40 employees. We work in three, three <coughs> cities. We work in numbers of states. With 40 employees, I'm proud of what we've been able to accomplish. Mary and I used to work at night when I was a lone employee and she would be typing my specifications for me. But we put something together that was magical. And I could stay in that and have a nice career, but I became more and more concerned with where is our country? What's happening? When, when they had a stimulus package that was supposed to create jobs, but only 7% of the stimulus money went to bricks and mortar. <coughs> and we weren't supposed to get, what, weren't supposed to get over 7.5% unemployment, maybe not over 8, 8.5, and, and then 9, and 9.5, and and then it went to over 10% unemployment, even though we spent 800 plus billion dollars. I just wish they had talked to a few of us in the private sector. I, I would challenge you all. How many of you all think the government is going to create jobs? <laughs> I see none of shaking it, but that's what they were counting on. The government creating jobs. It's the private sector. <coughs> We've got to find ways to stimulate the private sector. Unleash the capitalism that John was talking about. Find ways. There are ways. Cutting taxes are those. So we, we put together, we decided, this is not a campaign against Alan Mollahan back, back in the winter. We decided a bigger picture. This is about a campaign <coughs> about America. How we re get it back under control. So I'll say it now and I'll say it again later. My campaign now is no, not necessarily against my opponent. This is a campaign of whether or not you want Nancy Pelosi to be the Speaker of the House. You, okay? Have you all had enough of Nancy Pelosi? That's what this is about. If you want Nancy Pelosi to be continuing to lead this economic revitalization and the rebirth of our country, then vote for my opponent. We all know he's going to vote for Nancy Pelosi. I'm not. <laughs> I've told people, I'm 63 years old. I'm not trying to build a career. I have a career. I don't want a career in Washington. I believe in term limits. The shorter time possible over there, to find a way to rock the boat. My opponent says he's not going to rock the boat. He's going to support whatever the Democrats want for the leadership. I'm not. It's that clear. You've got a great contrast between them. He may be a, whatever, a fine fellow or whatever. I don't, I can't tell. I don't care. This is not about my opponent or me. This is about America. This is about Nancy Pelosi. This is about Obama. This is about the direction of our country. And you all are the people that have made the difference. John was absolutely right. Because when we came here in December of last year, John, what did we have? Maybe 20 people. Look at you now. 80-some people. 100 people perhaps in the room. You all are paying attention.